Get ready to dive into a world where empires stand on the brink of war and terrible monsters tear at the fragile borderlands of men. The Adventurer Conqueror King System Imperial Imprint, or as we like to call it, Axe 2, is now live on Kickstarter. Axe 2 is the new edition of the acclaimed best-selling fantasy role-playing game. You'll find everything you need to enjoy epic fantasy campaigns with a sweeping scope. Whether you want to crawl through dungeons, experiment with alchemy, crossbreed monsters, run a merchant emporium, raise an undead legion, or even conquer an empire, Axe 2 supports your playstyle. Axe 2 integrates experience point mechanics, making campaign activities a seamless part of the core gameplay loop. Your character levels up in new and exciting ways each time you play, adding massive replayability to each of your adventures. Axe 2 offers 18 character classes, 378 spells, new combat mechanics, and so much more. Support Axe 2 on Kickstarter today. For the fourth year in a row, Dawn is partnering with iHeartRadio for Can't Cancel Pride, a campaign that has raised over $11 million for the LGBTQ plus community. Dawn continuously strives to celebrate visibility and inclusivity for all, and that means supporting amazing organizations like Centerlink, providing safe spaces where over 52,000 community members go each week to receive critical and life-saving services. Dawn is there for your home, or your home away from home. So visit Can'tCancelPride.com to learn more. What would you like to do? It's the question that every DM asks every player at least once in their career. That question has led to more stories than any other question on the planet. But how do you turn that question into an amazing story? That's a question we answer on our show, How to Be a Better DM. For those crazy individuals who want to pretend like they can control the story, How to Be a Better DM is the perfect place to learn how to dungeon master without spending extra money or extra time. You'll get tips and techniques to avoid the significant pitfalls of dungeon masters everywhere. We have episodes coming out every Thursday morning, and we can't wait for you to roll initiative with us. Go to betterdungeonmaster.com slash knocked prone for more information knocked prone is a clean chaotic and deep podcast for DD nerds find more ways to support our show in the episode description last time on knocked prone <gasps> Zach! <gasps> grom grom you're okay but you're, what's going on thorn's gone he's taken care of and i'm gonna show him the vial that i captured thorn's essence in as you look at this soul stone you also see Zag is accompanied with Kaylin in this soul stone. How do we get out of here? Zag's the one who brought us here in the first place. He brought us here and left us. I did kill Thorn. So if it's left in my hands, but I just choose to not choose a god. This vacuum of a black hole is starting to suck more and more of these graves and decay out from the realm that you're currently in. And at the center of where you all once were holding hands, praying to Moradin, emerges a gigantic corporate office. The same office you once knew as Avani Mech's office. And as you are being sucked into this black hole, you see a woman who opens a door to this office and gives you a look, Celine, thanking you for helping her back into her throne. Is that Vecna? That is Vecna. Whether you're a halfling, a giant, or somewhere in between, around the table with your friends, playing Dungeons and Dragons. And if life ever knocks you down, your dice will surely turn around. Roll your stats, it's time to quest. Let's put your characters to the test. So as you guys are sucked through this planar portal, you emerge from the other side of this black hole type portal and you look around and kind of feel like you're in this fishbowl, but the fishbowl on the outside of it, rather than being water, it's made up entirely of stars. The absence of gravity is all around you and any discernible sensation has left and you are feeling kind of disoriented and vulnerable as you float through the fabled realm of the astral plane. This is a paradoxical void where the laws of nature do not apply. The astral plane is a world between worlds. It's not even like a space technically, and only the most unusual and powerful creatures can survive here. But as you are floating, you see in the distance a small human man, completely swallowed 
by a Grim Reaper costume that is way too many sizes too big for his body. And he's standing on this astral pathway and he reaches forward with his hand for you to shake. I'll go forward. Excuse me, um, I'm not entirely sure where I am, but I'm not back home. Would you be able to help us? Why, absolutely. My name is Boggy Billy, and I am the <laughs> Reaper here. And I help all the souls get to where they need to get going. So where are you guys heading today? Uh, we're, we're actually looking for the Shadowfell. Oh, are you? And he checks one of your pulses. You're alive. Oh, my goodness. Most of the people who come here are dead. Oh. That's why I wear this silly outfit. Uh, he, like, <laughs> takes the hood off of his Grim Reaper <laughs> costume. Uh, well, well, thank you for confirming we're still alive. We've definitely never been in a place like this before. So, can you get us to the Shadowfell? I think I can kind of help you out with that, but it depends. I haven't known you for too long. Now, you seem able to do a lot of things uh, on your own. Uh, oh, yes, I'm... Uh, we're the champions of Greyhaven. Oh, wonderful. That is so good to hear because this next part will take some quick footwork and it will have an encounter with an astral dragon in order to get where you're wanting to go if is, you want to is go. Is that really necessary? I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand how long of a day we've had. We killed a god. We oh. made his points to our blood-covered head. We did, and my friends here are actually very injured. Well, there is plenty of healing here in the astral plane, so I'm sure that you can go ahead and heal yourselves up as much as you need and not really feel too much... Excuse uh, me. Heal ourselves up like we can just wish ourselves to health? And you see Grom is already reaching into his bag and pulling out rations and is just going to town. Just... I think after a good rest, we should be all right. You get one hit point per cheese wheel that you (laughs) eat. (laughs) It looks like you got some good rations. I don't really need any rations. You see, I'm dead. Just like most of the people here. In life, it was kind of my whole shtick to help people get to where they were needing to get going. And unfortunately, lots of souls come here and try to exit. The reason that this astral dragon is guarding the exit to the astral plane is because so many souls are trying to leave without their bodies. And, you know, if souls leave the astral plane without their bodies, it's kind of this whole mess. They become these spirits that are kind of damned outside of any plane whatsoever. They have to haunt the material plane for the rest of their lives. And I really didn't want that to happen to any of you. But since you're living, I'm sure that you can do it. What if you talk to the dragon for us? Oh, you see, I can't do that because um, nepotism. What do we have to do to coax the astral dragon that we can get past, we can get where we need to go? Well, you just have to meet with this astral dragon. Again, it's going to take some quick footwork, somewhat of an encounter with this astral dragon. I'll leave that up to your own interpretation. I do not want to ruin the surprise. I think we're pretty done with surprises for the day. I'm sorry, I am contractually bound to not say a single word about what is going to happen to you next. Well, you've been very helpful. Actually, I'm sorry. That was sarcastic. You've not been particularly helpful. However, you are very kind, and I do appreciate that. Which way is the dragon? Oh, this way. And he walks along the path for a little while. As you are walking, there are so many stars around you, like I said. You are in the middle of space, below your feet, above your feet, all the way out as far as you can see are just stars and galaxies and a bunch of these celestial formations that are making up all of the dots that you can see that aren't just black. This is beautiful. My father and I used to watch the stars when we would go out on trips to pick up the animals. I've never seen them up this up close before. It is beautiful here. I agree. I can see why people want to stay. March into the astral dragon. <laughs> so, as you're walking into this field of stars... It feels like you're walking straight towards a star. But as you walk further and further, you see that the space between these stars isn't just this 
blackness of a void, but as instead it is moving slowly across your vision, almost like shooting stars, but much slower and much more clustered together, like a group of stars are moving together. And then in one great movement, a yellow eye snaps open and the mouth opens of the dark that you see in front of you. And the stars before you shift until you see this massive dragon made entirely out of these celestial bodies. And this dragon lets out this large yawn through rows of teeth as long as swords. The dragon clears its throat (coughs) and says... Halflings and humanoids, <laughs> it looks like we found our next contestants for Dancing Amongst the Stars! <laughs> oh, Game show music plays. Welcome, everyone, to Dancing Amongst the Stars. This is a mini game set in the astral plane where you guys are currently at. In this game, the champions of Greyhaven will compete to impress the astral dragon, the host of this game, with your dance skills and prowess. Now, the astral dragon will decide who gets to live to see another day and return to the material plane or Shadowfell through this portal that they are guarding with their enormous dragon body. Now, here's how the game works. You are all transported through the astral plane and find yourselves on a large circular dance floor floating amongst the stars. The astral dragon appears before you and explains, Each of you will have an opportunity to introduce yourselves and show off a brief dance move or two. So everyone go ahead and roll me performance checks and tell me what type of dance move and intro you're giving. 16 for Grom. Okay. How are you introducing yourself and what are you dancing with? I'm going to use my shield and my hammer. I usually prefer an arena of fists, but I guess feet do just as well. My name is Grom. And I want to essentially do a small performance with my short sword and shield, like treating it almost like a baton that I'm able to like just throw up into the air or like throw out into the astral plane and then like pull back and like I'll be using my shield like you know like the interpretive dances where they have like the fans that they like oh, yeah. do over their face and stuff like that so I'll like throw my hammer out and put the shield in front of my face and pull the hammer back and essentially just do an interpretive dance that is it's just like fighting it's how Grom fights but a little bit more dramatic end it uh, by catching both the shield and my hammer again and holding them out and then just kind of like having my eyes closed <sighs> open one eye to see what the dragon's reaction is the dragon is very impressed with the 16 performance well quite the showstopper we got here i'm very excited to see how you do in this competition and continuing on what is your name um my name is Ephemia, and i've never taken a dance class in my life you've got this princess <laughs> and what did you roll for your performance? I rolled a seven. Oh, nice. I'm on a roll. It's a five or a seven tonight. That's what kind of <laughs> night it is. Ephemia is going to go down to try to do the worm. And she's going to quickly realize that her rib cage is a little bruised from her previous encounter. And um, it's a painful looking worm. <laughs> it looks she as painful still does as it actually it. is. I still try my best. But it looks as painful to me, uh, or if, I guess it feels as painful as it looks to you guys to have to visualize that. <laughs> I like. I didn't even think to clap for Grom, but I'm like pity clapping for Ephemia. Yeah, no, so Grom is doing the exact same thing. Yeah. Uh, well, points for originality. Um, anyway, moving on. <laughs> what is your name? Brutal. Brutal. My name is Celine Ladygate. I'm from Etho Summit, and I'm just happy to know that my 15 years of ballet weren't for nothing. It's it's like recital from like 10 years ago. Like I know it, like the back of my hand. I'm like pirouetting and plieing and passeing and arabesquing all over the place. It's gorgeous. And I rolled a 15. And as I finish my performance, I'm going to I'm going to realize that I feel slightly outdanced by Grom. And I'm going to be internally having a little bit of an existential crisis. <laughs> wow. Next contestant, what is your name? Hi, I'm Nikki. And that's with two Ks. 
and I'm here because I'm gonna win. <laughs> and I specialize in hip hop and tap fusion. And she <laughs> rolls Can a I? natural two. <laughs> oh, no. At least I'm not the worst. Oh, and no. Hip hop d- and tap fusion is, is just as bad as it sounds. And Nikki does not do a good job. So I may have pity clapped for Ephemia, but this is one of those things where the secondhand embarrassment is so bad. I'm like going beat red for Nikki. <laughs> I'm very glad that you're here to join us. At least you could come back maybe for the next show and try again when you're a little more practice. Anyway, next contestant, who are you? My name is Joe Seville, and I don't really dance much, but I do hand interpretations shadows if you will and he sticks his hand up in front of a light and he makes abraham lincoln's face and rolls an 18 <laughs> and the crowd goes <laughs> wild Wait, no 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 no! for reals though have you ever seen like an america's got talent they do like with this like really intense emotional music these like puppet shows do you I know what I'm talking those, about? No. Oh my gosh, I I don't even know what to call it for anybody to be able to look it up. Are we competing against these people? Yes. Does it feel uh-huh. like it? Yes. You are all competing <laughs> against each other. Do they have like bodies or do they seem to be astral? Oh, the other two are astral. They are completely incorporeal people who are kind of like an amalgamation of stars, much like the host was. I'm tempted to use thaumaturgy in an attempt to sabotage. Actually, that's not what Grom would do. Grom is, Grom, is a very, <laughs> Grom is a very honorable person. But with your performances, Joe Seville and Grom, you both gain an inspiration point. So once you've all had the opportunity to introduce yourselves and you're sizing up the competition, the game will begin as follows. The Astral Dragon is going to call out a style of dance, and all of you will have to improvise a dance routine based on that style. The styles of dance may include anything from ballet to hip-hop to traditional folk dances. The Astral Dragon will choose the style randomly for each round, using a D8 basically is how I'm going to assign that. Players will be judged on their creativity, style, and skill. And that will be calculated by three D20 checks. The first check will be determined by the style of dance you are dancing. And the other two checks will be a performance check and athletics check for each round. And that will be your total score for each round. So the Astral Dragon will award points to each player based on this performance, uh, calculated by what I just talked about, and the player with the lowest score on each round will take damage equal to the difference between their score and the next last player's score amount of D6s. So if you are one point off from the person who's ahead of you, you take 1d6 of damage. But if you're 10 points off, it's 10d6. If any player is reduced to zero hit points, they are out of the game, and the rest of the players will move on to the next round. The game will continue on in this way until only one player remains. That player will be declared the winner and will earn the right to return to the material plane or Shadowfell, in your guys' case, with your party through the portal. You guys are up against Nikki and Joseville. The Astral Dragon may also reward special prizes or bonuses to players who impress them with their dancing skills. The winner of each round is immune for the next round of dancing and gets a break. So they don't have to roll for the next round. They won't take any damage. If a player overperforms the rest of the competition during a round by like a long shot, they get advantage on a roll of their choice for the next round of dancing. And every third round, a player will be partnered with another contestant to perform a style of dance. Every third? How many rounds are there? As many uh, as it takes until Everyone dies. there's one person left. And you won't die, obviously. The hit points that you're taking are your, like, dance points. So, the styles of dancing, a one is a ballet, two is jazz, three is contemporary, four is salsa, five is ballroom, six is Bollywood, seven is breakdancing, and eight is flamenco. So, players, if you're ready to dance amongst the stars and impress me, the astral dragon, step onto the dance floor and show me your moves. And with that, everyone roll me initiative. Fourteen. 19. 6. <laughs> Ephemia, you are first in the initiative. Go ahead and roll me a D8 to determine the style of dance. Oh, gosh. I got a 2. 
a two. This is going to be a jazz round. So, contestants, the jazz that you'll be performing will be a lively and energetic dance that incorporates elements of swing, blues, and contemporary music. I'm excited to see what you come up with and begin. And she will point at you, Ephemia. What are you doing? For the specific style of jazz, you will be using sleight of hand as your third check. I will be posting the entirety of the rules to our Patreon for free, so go check those out at patreon.com forward slash knock. Oh, sleight of hand, performance, and, and athletics. Athletics, okay. And that's your score for the round. As this is happening, I want to use thaumaturgy. So one of the effects of um, thaumaturgy is that I can create an instantaneous sound that originates from a point of my choice. Could I do a crowd cheering Ephemia on? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Ephemia, <laughs> go ahead and roll one of your rolls, whichever you choose of the three with advantage. Okay, I'm just going to go in order and just get the straight up score over with. So I'm going to start with athletics, a nine for on my first athletics roll. Okay. I'll stick with what I had. Okay, so performance, I also got a nine. A nine? Nice, okay, nice. nice. Consistent. consistent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Slide of hand, I got an unnatural 20. Nice. Okay, so a total awesome. of 38. That's without the advantage. Oh, okay, so roll me advantage on one of your nines. Let's do performance on that one then. Okay. And I got a 15. Okay, so... so 9, 15, nice. and 20. Nice. Ephemia bringing the heat. 44, okay. What a great dance that you've performed for us. Thank you so much. Josephville. It's your turn. And he's going to roll with disadvantage because he only does hand shadows. <laughs> Boo! Instead of cheering. No, I'm just joking. He rolled a natural 20, but he's Whoa. rolling with disadvantage because he's doing hand shadows. And his oh. second roll was an 11. Uh, that's 11 on one of them. So they're fantastic hand shadows. They just don't make for a great dance. They don't make for great <laughs> jazz. Yeah. yeah, he tries to incorporate jazz in them. You can see that he has like a little black leotard on his fingers, but it doesn't really come through in the shadows. Shadow. Shadow hands. Uh, <laughs> so he gets an 11, a 15, and a 12. So that is 38 points for Joe Seville. He sashays with his hands a bit. Great job, everyone. Grom, I believe you're up next. Athemia's feeling really cocky about her pirouette game right now. <laughs> Athletics is a 13. Performance, I got 20. I have to get a 3 to not be last. Okay, and a 14. So 49. 49. Grom's a beautiful dancer. Wow, these are some amazing dance moves. You'd think that you were the champions of something, for sure. We're the champions of Grey Hand. <laughs> Maybe they should have a dance arena instead. <laughs> and Celine, you are up. Nikki is looking ready to go. Athletics, 12. Performance, 11. Sleight of hand, natural, 1. Oh. <laughs> What's your bonus to that? Plus three. So four. Yeah. So that puts you at a grand total of 27, Celine. You might be out really fast. I wasn't trained in jazz, okay? Uh, go ahead and describe me what your jazz dance looks like with that natural one in there. It was just ballet with, with a little more bounce. <laughs> Ephemia <laughs> still claps at her attempt. <laughs> it's Nikki's turn, and I'm about to do some jazz tap fusion, and that's never been done before. So I get a 12, a 16, and a 2. Can she stop with the tap? That puts her at 30 points. So unfortunately, Celine, your jazz was trash, and you take three. D6 uh, of jazz points away from your health. So, question. It's not actually affecting our health, but I have the extra, like, whatever, 15 hit points. It goes it's off not... your maximum okay, hit points. I'm just do double checking. Okay, how much did you say? You take 14 points of jazz damage. All right. All right. Basically, it's just people making angry jazz hands at you. <laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen, we've had one of our best performances of the night. Grom Iron Fist, you are immune of competition, so you are free to go take a break, get some cookies and milk. But unfortunately, that means that we'll have to go on without Grom for this next section, which... Celine, go ahead and roll me a D8 to determine what the next dance style is. 
seven. With a seven, it is breakdancing. Breakdancing is a style of street dance that originated back in Brigaroon, and it's characterized by athletic and aerobic movements. Wow, too bad Grom's not participating. Yeah, he's actually a b-boy in his free time. A g-boy, <laughs> actually, is what they call yeah, him. Grom boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's your... Can I use thaumaturgy to give them advantage? Yes, again, you Especially may. since I'm sitting out. You can give one person advantage. Right, so, so I'll... it's going to you. Okay, so with breakdancing, of course, you'll still do athletics and performance, but the third skill check will be intimidation as you kind of like try to intimidate your opponents in this dance battle. Ephemia, you are up first. Go ahead and tell me what style of breakdance you're doing as you're rolling this performance check. Ephemia, despite her pain from earlier, is still going to try first off going into a stall and then trying to spin around in a stall. The stall is the position where your weight is all on your head and your hands and your legs are kind of up in the air at different angles. If you roll me a 15 or higher on this, I will give you advantage on one of the next two for having some originality in it. I took hip hop for six years. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. well. That's the only reason I know that term. Athletics, of course. Eight and eleven. Come on! <laughs> it's bad over here. Uh, you you thought her first time was bad? She continues to be bad. Oof. What'd you it, get? It was an eight, eleven, and a seven. Oh no. For a grand total of twenty-six. Twenty-six. Grom boos you. <laughs> oh. You need more core strength. <laughs> I'm injured. <laughs> and with that, it is Joe Seville's turn. He's going to copy Ephemia's routine exactly, <laughs> but with hand shadows. Uh, he gets a 10, a 16, and a 10 for a total of. 36 breakdancing. <laughs> yeah, he's just he's over here. He's a really here. good puppet master. <laughs> he must be a really good he puppet did, master. He did perfectly copying my routine with just his hands. His two fingers were up in the air. There was a lot of spinning. And Celine, you are up next. All right. Go ahead and describe what you're doing with your breakdance routine. I'm just going to go all out as I saw that I lost the last round. And I was still just like sticking with the ballet. I just go crazy, you know? I'm like, I'm getting up, I'm down on the floor, I'm like spinning around, Crunkin'. and I can't tell if I look terrible <laughs> or like kinda cool, you know? Well, I can't tell if this is horrible or amazing. Let's find out. <laughs> Athletics, 17. Nice. Okay. Oh, okay. So you're halfway to beating Marissa. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nap. <laughs> Performance, 16. 16. Beaten there you go. <laughs> I'm also not injured, so. Yeah, I was trying to spit on my head with the bloody head, okay? 14. 14 for a grand total of 47. Holy nice. cow. That's actually really good. That is really good. That was beautiful. <laughs> so <laughs> your, your crunking works. <laughs> and with that, Nikki is going to get up and she's going to be like, oh my gosh, crunking? I used to do this all the time in college. Five, <laughs> a <laughs> nine, <laughs> and a 15. So that's 14 20, oh plus no. tw oh, 29. Unfortunately, Ephemia, you're going to take 3d6 of damage. 14 points of breakdancing damage as your stall out turns into a stall ouch. And with that, <laughs> um, Grom, I accept that. you are back in the competition. Oh, good job, Celine. You can take a break this time. And with that, Grom, go ahead and roll me a D8 to determine our next style. Three. Three. Contemporary. This contestants will be a style of dance that combines elements of ballet, modern dance, and emphasizes freedom of movement and expression. I'm excited to see what you all have come up with for me. And begin! For this style of dance, you will be using acrobatics as the third skill as you try to effortlessly glide across the stage. For this contemporary dance, since it's the third round, you will be paired up with Grom. Oh. oh. So how does that work for our roles? Do we still do our own roles? You will both roll, and you will take the highest from whichever number. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's start on athletics. athletics. A natural 20. A natural 20. Whoa. 30. For 30? Whoa. Wow. Go oh. ahead and roll me an extra D8 on top of that, just since it's a natural 20. I'll take his. Mine was 11. <laughs> 34 points. 
I don't think you even need to continue, <laughs> but let's go anyway. Let's yeah. just see what is happening. I, I'm yeah, really happy with I need my a description. Hair. What in the world is happening I in this contemporary up. dance? <laughs> <laughs> He's very gentle, okay? I'm brought to tears. She runs up, and I actually just toss her into the air, but since there's no gravity, she just goes up and up and up and up. <laughs> it's it's just beautiful. It's yeah. beautiful. She's wow. doing flips. And yeah. I'm having a moment because I just like... Gently extend my arms and wow. do a little. I give like, her my hammer so that when it's time to come back, I just boom, and she's pulled back down wow. to the earth. It's, it's, it's beautiful. magical. Oh my it's gosh. very emotional. I want to draw that. <laughs> All right, performance. I got a twenty-one. Twenty-one. Got a Twelve. So yeah. All right. Wow. Twenty-one. 21. All right. Uh, you continue to be graceful. Again, Grom is tossing you into the air, and without gravity, it is so graceful. You are like a swan moving throughout a lake. And go ahead and roll me your acrobatics check to make sure that you nail this performance. Athenia has never felt more beautiful. An 18. And yeah, I got a 14. An 18. Okay. This might just knock the other two people out. This is going to be so. We've got a 30, a 21. So much contemporary 34. damage. Th- a 34, 34, a 21. A 21, and an 18. So currently you are looking at. 73. 73. <laughs> I yeah. 73. <laughs> it's the prettiest dance you've ever seen. Aphemia knows a lot of it is due to Grom, but she's just happy to be Aphemia there. and Grom, like. It's like, incredible. It's the moment that, like, they hate. They hate each other and it's like the moment that they like realize like we have to come together to to do (laughs) it it's a moment of bonding just pure illicit bonding their souls are bonding nikki puts some tap shoes on her fingers and then joins joe seville in his (laughs) shadow so that's a 13 on the first a 10 on the second and a 15 on the third for a total of 38 38 minus 73. I'm going to roll 35d6 <laughs> right now. I think this is over. I don't know. I don't know if I can ever come back from 35d6. Wow. This is going to be the most damage. We will roll and it's going to be contemporary damage and it's, it's beautiful. This is the most beautiful da- dance you've ever seen. Tap the d6 for me if you would. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> You deal 129 points of contemporary damage. Nikki and Josephville completely vanish. Their souls wither away into the astral plane, and you have won in dancing amongst the stars. The entire audience of stars are completely in tears. You've brought this game show host of this astral dragon also to tears. And they're like, how can I ever continue on to this show? We are canceling based <laughs> off of beauty. I cannot live another day knowing that this show could be so beautiful. Please. Hug your children. You guys have completely defeated this competition. It's canceled for the rest of ever. This episode will play on rerun for the rest of eternity. But I believe that is where we're going to end our session for the night as the astral dragon opens the star constellations within its chest and you see a portal leading to the shadow fell. My name is Cade, the host and dance master of this Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition adventure, and I'm joined here by the players to my left. Mason playing Grom. Marissa playing Ephemia. And Brooklyn playing Celine. All right. If you love this episode, go ahead and dance on over to our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash knocked, where Mason and Marissa will be posting their entire contemporary dance routine to the <laughs> Patreon. <laughs> It'll make you cry. It's gonna end up with us broken bones <laughs> and we need uh, zero gravity. Legit, yeah. legit. I have a representation of how beautiful their dance was. I'm sending it to the group chat. It was a, was we'll it the TikTok that I sent you that I literally cried and I was like, check this out. No, but it's this dance couple, a duet from Utah that won World of Dance. Oh wow! And I'm sending you this. And we I've will already post seen it. this it, World of Dance clip has to our Patreon. Almost That's- 10 million views on YouTube. It's beautiful. That this is how I imagine your incredible dancer team. Um, everyone's going to just start shipping a Femia and Grom now. <laughs> it's yeah, too late. Yeah. Uh, does anyone have anything to shout out? No, nothing can follow 
follow that. Nothing can follow that. Check out um, our Patreon to go check out this dance routine. We'll leave it up for free so you can just see it without even being a uh, member. But speaking of which, if you'd like to join our Patreon for free for one whole week, we have that option. Go and check out the Himbo Squad on our Patreon and you can get a free one week trial on our Patreon to check out all of our amazing content. And we hope that you remember when life knocks you flat on your back, all you got to do is keep rolling and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I can actually sabotage it really easily. <laughs> Thaumaturgy allows you to mess with shadows. So oh, I, yeah. I could like... Oh. I could, <laughs> make it just a middle finger yeah. the entire time. <laughs>